you for joining us today for our conversation about how to drive traffic to your website. Uh, I hope you get a kick out of this cartoon. There's a lot of people in our industry trying to figure things out. I commend you for being on the call and learning about what needs to be done to drive internet traffic. Very briefly, housekeeping. We have a lot of people on this call. So everyone is muted. If you have a question, we have someone standing by, and you can type your question into the question and answer section, and we'll either stop uh, and add, answer the question or leave it for the end. So again, how do you drive traffic to your website? If you've been on any of our calls, you've learned a little bit about what we do and who we are. Uh, we've been students of the industry for quite a long time. Again, I'm the president of PCMS. And on the call today with us is Randy Thornton, who you'll hear from in a few minutes. And she is our internet marketing coach who works very closely with our clients to help them drive traffic to their site. I think it's pretty obvious, and I think uh, most of you would agree, that if you don't change the way you're doing business today, you're not going to be making any money in the near future because the market, at best, will be flat for another two, three, or four years. So it's very important that you understand that the expectations that the consumer has today is greater than the innovation we've delivered as an industry. Today's consumers and agents are different than they were even a few years ago, but unfortunately, because of the market conditions, a lot of us have spent much, much time in the last year surviving versus innovating. So when we get into the idea of driving traffic, it's important to understand what that means, why you're doing it, and how that all plays into being the brokerage of the future. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Randy and have her show you what it is that you need to do. Randy? All right. Thank you, Jose. Um, first of all, let's talk about why it's important to drive web or traffic to your website. And the first two obvious reasons are for more listings. If you can prove to sellers that your website is where buyers in your marketplace search for homes, you are more than likely to get the listing. And secondly, more sales. The more website traffic you get, the more eyeballs you get on your listings. Um, and thus, the more eyeballs, the more potential for quicker and faster sales. So where can you get more website traffic? Um, let me ask you this. Where do you go to find information? Where do you go if you are going to plan a trip or get recommendations? And how do you approach your personal buying decisions? I guarantee you go online. When was the last time you opened your local newspaper to find information? Search is here to stay. Every year there are more searches and more and more searchers. The number keeps going up. And Google gets about 70% of all searches that are conducted online. Google search volume continues to climb. And I just read Google gets over 14 billion searches each month. Google continues to be the number one resource for people. Therefore, Google is your number one resource to increase your website traffic. Let's take a look at both of these ads or listings. And which do you think is more credible, a newspaper ad or a ranking on Google? And which is more likely to draw traffic to your website? There's been a major shift in how we establish credibility with new clients and stay relevant to existing clients. Anyone can place an ad in a newspaper, but when Google places your website on page one, in essence, Google is saying to the world, this is a great website, check it out. Google is very powerful. Today, if you have a website, you are a publisher. You are creating and publishing media. Your website is your opportunity to generate media such as content, videos, blog posts, etc. So instead of placing an ad in the yellow pages or newspaper, add this content to your website. So to understand how Google can increase traffic to your website, you first need to understand search. I'm sure everyone is familiar with this page, but this is a Google, this is Google search page. A searcher enters keywords into the search field. And when the searcher hits that search button, a page is displayed. And this page is called the search results page. Your website traffic will increase when your website is found on the search results page. 
there are only two ways to get your website listed on Google's search results page. The first is known as PPC, which is also um, referenced uh, pay per click. And when you place an ad with Google, you pay Google each and every time someone clicks on your listing. The second way is through organic listings. And this is when your website is optimized using SEO best practices. And you do not pay Google to be listed on the organic listing. If you take a look at this page a little bit closer, you see the search term in the field box, Dallas Homes. Right below that, we have some information from Google. Um, there are about 20 million different results that Google has indexed for this particular keyword phrase. And that's important to know. The other thing while looking at this page that is important to know is that Google will display 10 organic listings on each and every page. So in order for your site to rank for the particular keyword phrase, Google, or excuse me, Dallas Homes, for instance, you need to have a search ranking for the keyword term Dallas Homes that is in position 1 through 10. The placement that you have on that page is your search placement. So we just mentioned there's two ways to get on Google, um, either through organic listing or through a pay-per-click listing. And each one has its advantages and disadvantages. So let's take a look at these. The organic listings it, it takes longer because you have to optimize your website for competitive keyword search rankings. In pay-per-click, your website can instantly be displayed on a search results page as long as you are willing to pay for that listing. Organic listings take, um, have many factors that are needed to be incorporated into a website. Therefore, development is harder. And on top of that, SEO is constantly changing. Therefore, you must be constantly optimizing. Pay per click, the development time remains real easy. Once you write an ad and set your budget, you've got your placement um, instantaneously on Google. On the organic side, your website can rank and be displayed on the search results page for numerous related keyword phrases. And what I mean by this is we just looked at a search results page for the particular keyword phrase, Dallas Homes. You could also rank on page one for Dallas Homes for Sale, Dallas Real Estate, Dallas Realtor, etc. On the pay-per-click side, you only have your listing displayed when you are bidding for a specific terms such as Dallas Homes. You would need to bid for all of the individual other keyword phrases someone might type in to display on different pages. And as far as cost, over time with organic, you tend to pay less because you are um, paying typically a flat fee. And with pay-per-click, over time, um, you are going to end up paying more depending on how competitive the keyword phrase is that you are bidding for. And organic listings, of course, are long-term unless you um, completely do something that is considered spammy in Google's eyes, your listing is going to remain where it is. And if you your budget runs out um, with pay-per-click, once your budget runs out, your listing is instantly taking, taken off that search results page. So how do you actually get your site on Google? Um, it is not well known how search engines actually determine what results they're going to display on a search engine results page. So let's take a look at that. The first step and the beginning of the process is when the search engines or Google crawls the web. The task of crawling is performed by software, which is called a bot or spider. And a way to think of this, you just think of Google as a spider that is constantly crawling the web. And how it crawls the web is by looking for links. And it goes from one link to another to another to another. And the Google bot um, actually travels at a pretty rapid speed. The second step is after a web page is crawled, it is indexed. And the index pages are stored in a giant database from where they can be retrieved later. The third step 
is when somebody actually does a keyword search, the process begins. And what happens is the bot and the index pages are displayed by comparing the keyword in the search request with the indexed pages in the database. And since it's likely the search engine it has millions of pages containing the keyword phrase, they really just start calculating the relevancy of all of the pages it has in its index. When we saw Dallas Homes, for instance, we saw that Google had over 20 million different pages that are indexed for that particular keyword phrase. And how Google and others determine your search ranking placement is based on their own algorithms. And there are over 200 different factors that will ultimately determine your ability to rank. And as I just mentioned a little bit ago, on top of that, Google and others are constantly changing their algorithms or their search engine ranking factors. Step four, which is the last step in the search engine activity, is retrieving the results. Basically, this is displaying the endless pages that are sorted from the most worthy to the least worthy. This process determines your website search ranking or its placement. And to get your site listed on the search results page, it needs to be search engine optimized better than any other website that ranks higher than yours. So how can you improve your search ranking? First, you need to know that a search engine does not see a web page the same way you and I see a search page. Humans and search engines view websites differently. And although technology advances rapidly, search engines do not see the actual look and feel of a website. So this is the home page for Sotheby's.com. This is what a searcher will see when they land on this page. However, this is what Google sees when the Google Spider visits the same page. Because Google Spiders read the coding behind the website, your website coding needs to be search engine optimized to properly communicate with the spider. But the good news is you do not need to be a website coder to communicate well with Google. Today website coding is created based on your content management system that finally generates the code on each and every page on your website. However, you do need to know that SEO best practices and which ones to implement to make sure that your system is actually SEO friendly. When your website is properly optimized or SEO friendly, your ability to communicate with the Google Spider is enhanced and you want your website and the Google Spider to become best friends. I don't know about you, but I'm very selective with my friendships and relationships, and some of the best friendships I've been fortunate in my life to have have always developed over time. Communication, trust, originality, and personality are all traits that ultimately determine the strengths of my friendships. And there are many factors that will determine the strength of your website's relationship with Google. If you want Google to reward you with the biggest compliment, a prominent search engine ranking, your website must communicate and deliver a level of trust as soon as possible. How well your website communicates with Google will ultimately determine three really important things. First, how often will the Google Spider return to your website? The more frequently Google returns, the more opportunities you have to demonstrate your value and actually continue the relationship. Secondly, what impression does your website have with Google? First impressions are important as well as ongoing impressions. And last but not least, it will determine if Google will actually want to continue the relationship. When the Google Spider visits your website, you have a limited amount of time to communicate and adapt an ongoing relationship. One of the great things about Google is that Google not only can provide a substantial vehicle for website traffic, but Google also provides tools to help you monitor and improve your search engine ranking. And the first tool Google offers for free is uh, Google Analytics. And by adding some code to your website, you can analyze your website traffic and make educated changes according to real data. 
most people simply view the number of visitors that come to their website, but truly buried in these numbers are powerful statistics and actionable information. The second free tool that Google offers is a tool called Google Webmaster Tools. And again, by adding some code to your website, you can use these tools to set up specific site configurations, observe Google's information it has about your website, and view actual recommendations straight from Google itself. Today, social media and search engine optimization are connected. The number of Facebook links you have, Facebook shares, retweets, and brand mentions will all impact your website's popularity and will also have an impact on your search ranking. One, you know, some of the few things that make social media so powerful today is that it is another way for people to search and find resources um, such as news, articles, and information. Social media is also real time and shows up in Google's search engine results pages, so a tweet could actually show up as a result. Um, and the number one reason that social media can be so powerful is that it can actually drive traffic back to your website. And one of the questions I'm asked probably the most about social media is which social media platform should my company participate in? And the answer is quite simple. You need to be where your prospects are. Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube are my top three recommendations for real estate companies in general but each marketplace is different. While Google and other search engines are complicated and constantly changing, there is no doubt they can drive a massive amount of traffic to your website. There are no shortcuts, and to obtain a top search engine ranking for relative and relevant keyword search phrases, your website needs to be better optimized than any other website that is currently ranked ahead of yours. At a minimum, when I work with my SEO clients, um, each and every month we monitor several different things. Um, we always take a look at the different keywords that the site ranks for, and then we monitor every month. Has that keyword phrase and has the search engine placement gone up or has it gone down? We also monitor the competitors. Um, if uh, we notice a competitor is all of a sudden ranking for a keyword phrase that we're targeting, we then dive into and understand what they're doing. Um, the third thing that we always look at each and every month is the website number of visitors. We want to look at where those visitors came from and are we trending up or are we trending down. At a basic and at a minimum, these are things that you should be reviewing each and every month. And as you gather and have enough history, it's going to be very telling to you how well your website is doing as far as increasing the website traffic. And last but not least, the number one and single most important way to increase traffic to your website is really just to take action. Your website traffic will never increase unless you do not do something about it to make that happen. Think long term. If you want to increase your website traffic and become best friends with the Google Spider, you must implement SEO. A website SEO audit is a great vehicle to uncover your search engine ranking problems that you may not be aware of and can provide you with recommendations to increase and improve your website traffic. I hope I've created some awareness to help you drive traffic to your website. Um, Jose, do we have any questions? Yes, we have a bunch of questions. Uh, the first okay. one is, how do I decide between spending money on organic search or uh, doing pay-per-click? That question is often asked, and you have to understand that there are going to be different costs you're going to pay when you do pay-per-click, and it really depends on how competitive the marketplace is. So you're bidding against others that want to rank for those particular keyword terms and phrases. If you go to Google um, and have a Google account, you can create an ad account or a pay-per-click account. And then Google will um, tell you, if I want my listing to be displayed when somebody types in the word Dallas, 
home, it'll tell you how much you're going to have to pay for that click. And you know, the click could cost anywhere from a dollar upwards to twenty-five dollars. So then, based on that information, you have to determine if I spend two dollars every time someone clicks to my website, how long before my budget monthly budget is going to run out? And if I were to implement SEO and I was on page one of Google for Dallas Homes, how much traffic could I get and what would be my cost per click? So really it gets down to how much do you have to invest in and what, what is it going to cost you to get that click to your website? Does that okay, make great. sense? Yep. All right. The next question is how do you monitor your competitor's site stats? Well, <clears throat> There are particular programs that somebody like myself has access to. Um, it's real tough for the average uh, person to monitor that. And one of the reasons is if you go to Google and you type in a keyword phrase and you see your competitor come up, that does not necessarily mean that that is what somebody else is going to see when they do a search because Google has what's called um, search uh, personalization. So because of your history and the things that you've searched for in the past in the uh, website you've clicked on, your search results are going to differ than somebody else's. So you need to have a program that's going to enable you to go in and search and retrieve the results um, from a non-personalized perspective. So for somebody that isn't in SEO, that is a little tough to monitor. Okay. All right, next question. How do blogs play into this, and what blog platforms help the most with SEO? That's an excellent question, by the way, Vicki. There's a lot of good platforms out today. Um, there was once a time when you know, trying to figure out how to do all this was really complicated. You had to get a designer, then you had someone had to code it, and um, it was a lengthy process. Um, but as far as blogging goes itself, WordPress is fantastic. It's an open source, which means that anybody can create plugins and tools that will work within that platform. And there's a lot of really good plugins that you can um, add to a WordPress blog that will help you optimize all of the posts that you add to your blog. Okay, perfect. Here's another really good question from uh, Jeff. Uh, Talk about the relationship between hyperlocal marketing and long tail searches. Is there a relationship? Well, long tail is going to be, for instance, let's go back to Dallas Homes. Long tail may be Dallas Homes for sale um, in, you know, and then the, they might type in a word that um, relates to a specific condominium project. So it's a real targeted search. It's not general. And when you have a long-term search, the concept behind that is somebody's already maybe done their research or somebody is specifically looking at a targeted area, therefore they're more apt to be serious about a transaction. Um, and as far as hyper-localization, um, I don't know if the two relate. I mean, they're two different things, but um, Google is very local and wants to display local searches that are relevant when people are specifically looking for a particular marketplace. And localization and optimizing your website for a local presence is equally as important. Okay. All right, next question. What advice would you give to agents who seem committed to competing online with the major players like Realtor.com and Trulia? The thing I love most about being online is that you don't have to have the deep corporate pocketbook you, if you optimize your website, um, you have the ability to outrank um, the big guys. And it's a level, even level playing field. So that's one of the greatest things about search engine optimization. OK. Uh, a related question is, what if I'm part of a franchise um, you know, and they're doing their SEO for their national corporate purposes? and you're someone on the local level. How, how do you how do you feel about that? Well, a franchise. I mean, as far as what you do with your own website, you still have the ability to have an individual website that's going to rank locally when somebody conducts a search. Um, I found in my past experience that franchises don't always do the best for SEO. Once again, therefore, it's a level playing field. But if you're website appears and um, the franchise website appears, 
that only strengthens the um, credibility to that name. Um, people expect to have your brand or your name appear um, if you are an expert in that marketplace. Okay, perfect. Well, I don't see any other questions coming through, and we're just about out of time. Uh, thank you so much, Randy. You did a great job. Our next session, okay, so we've spent the last few weeks really kind of driving traffic to the site now and you know, understanding what the online consumer is looking for. In two weeks, on February 17th, our next Camp Reinvent session will be about how you engage the consumer on your site. So you can do a great job doing all the stuff that Randy just talked about, but if you're not giving that consumer the information they're looking for on your website, there's a good chance to go to the next uh, person's website. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody, very much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next Camp Reinvent. Have a great day.